Welcome to Atari Newsline. So I'm so excited about this special, you guys. So BBSs um, have been a really important thing in my life. When I was 18, as many of you know, I joined Argus in Arlington, Texas, and my handle was Ballistic Coffee Boy, and here I am today, so 30-something years later. But um, I joined my first BBS when I was 18 on my Tandy 4000 using a 1200 baud modem, and I met some of the coolest people. Um, I'm only friends with one of them still, but um, all these years later. But um, we had a lot of fun hanging out and um, also just uh talking in chat rooms, you know, on the BBS. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm, I'm stoked about this because, um, recently, uh, I kind of got reacquainted with BBSs through, uh, Antic, the Atari 8-bit podcast. And, um, I'm, I'm stoked about this because he, he mentioned Southern Amos and the basement. And, uh, these are two that are still running, actually two BBSs that are still running kind of Atari BBSs. So, um, really cool. So, uh, Kay talked about this and, uh, also talked about using muffin term to access these on your iPad for free. If you don't have an Atari APIC computer with a modem set up through a landline or whatever. So, uh, anyway, so, uh, long story short, I'm going to go over all that this episode, tell you about how you can connect, tell you about Bod Day, and my good friend Bally Alley and I interviewed uh, these two gentlemen, uh, Rob and John, uh, who are sysops for two uh, still existing Atari BBSs. So pretty cool, guys. Stay tuned to this episode. I can't wait to share this with you. Come on back. You are, you are watching, watching Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy. Welcome back, you guys. BCB here, your host. So as I said, I'm so stoked about this. Um, so uh, to just start off with, a lot of you know my story, how I got involved in BBSs, right? My history with it and everything. I kind of told you in the intro, uh, kind of a long story short version. But so um, BBSs are near and dear to my heart. I can't tell you how many times I sat there on that Tandy 3000 dialing in um, to AOL and uh, CompuServe and other things which became AOL and then MSN. I was on the MSN network for like 15 years, a long time. So, um, but uh, just some really cool memories of putzing around with these BBSs. I was in one in Arlington, Texas called Argus and um, lots of cool memories. Uh, I was working at Arby's at the time when I was 18 and um, I had a friend there. Um, I won't mention any names because I don't know where they are in life anymore, really, but except for her. But, um, so we were friends and she told me at work about a BBS and I went to her house and she had a roommate at the time and they were both on this BBS all the time talking to people. And I was like, Oh my God, this is cool. So they uh, connected their computer through a phone line and went on BBSs, which stands for bulletin board systems. So there, there were some back in the day that were geared a little more towards Atari users. Um, a couple of these were Southern Amos and the basement. And um, so those are two still existing Atari BBSs that you could dial into that are still running. Um, I think um, I think they they went down and then came back up. Um, but you'll find out more in this interview for sure. Um, so excited about this because my good friend Adam Bally Alley, who's been on my channel before, my local gaming buddy, um, he runs a uh, <clears throat> podcast to website about the Bally Astrocade, which is his um, love. But he all, he's also an Atari fan like me, so we geek out over it. But anyway, so um, <clears throat> he was talking about um, uh, these 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 two BBSs, and we connected at his house, at his house on his Atari 800XL computer, I believe, or his, was it a XE computer? I can't remember if it was 130XE or what. Maybe it was a 65XE. 
computer, Atari computer. And so we connected to um, the basement and uh, and Southern Amos, and it was it was just so cool. So just sit there and do that with this modem and <clears throat> go on there on the Atari computer and log in and check out the message boards and really cool. So um, I'm excited to talk to you about this. Here we are over at uh, my buddy Adam's house on January 18th, 2024. And uh, we decided to do an impromptu club meeting for ACE. Uh, that's AACE, the Albuquerque Atari Computer Enthusiast Group. Uh, we reformed uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, the club used to be uh, around for quite a while and uh, they disbanded a few years back. So uh, me and Adam and Rick and others in the group here, uh, Chris, a um, whole lot of others decided to reform the group. Uh, there's about seven of us, six or seven of us, um, or so, <laughs> I believe, and uh, maybe five or six. Um, might be losing count, but uh, really cool. So we get together, we geek out over Atari computers and talk about stuff and trade software and hardware and just chat. So here, uh, our buddy Rick is uh, connecting through X term or I'm sorry, X E term on the, I think that's an Atari 800 XL or 600 XL he's using down there. Um, here he is connecting to the basement. So this is my first time seeing uh, him connect since I'd seen Rick connect at his house. He has a, uh, a, a little modem set up and his computer and everything. So Rick is so freaking smart. He built his own modems back in the day. Um, he's a great friend that I met through Adam, and he's actually fixed my Atari ST modem, taken it apart, fixed the belt, and um, he's fixed several of my Atari computers that I've wagged home from eBay for cheap price that, that uh, are listed as untested. He's been able to fix every single one of those and even upgrade them. I think that's a 600 XL down there because it's so small. Uh, but uh, yes, um, just really cool. So here he is connecting through XE term, as I said. Um, and uh, we're just having a good time chatting about it. Um, I just love that the group got back together. Um, I was never in the original group. Um, Adam was, uh, back in the day, but, um, so we kind of found each other more or less through, uh, Ferg's Atari 2600 game by game podcast. As many of you know, I called in during the pandemic talking about how I had no local gaming buddies and Ferg put me and Chris plus plus in touch who, uh, put me in touch with Adam and through Adam, I met Rick. So uh, we just kind of blossomed from there. Uh, so uh, definitely cool. I just love that I can geek out with guys like this who live like 10, 15, 20 minutes away only. Um, it's just so fun. So I highly recommend everyone out there watch this episode, learn how to connect to these Atari BBSs that are out there. Um, it's pretty easy. You can use um, a couple of different programs to do that, to get the uh, kind of like emulation software on your computer. There's Muffin Term, of course, um, and many other methods I'll discuss in this video. So, um, or you can connect through a modem just like this. I think Adam has a VoIP line, a VOIP line, uh, through his uh, modem or his router. And that's how he's connecting. He said it, he called them and it was like very cheap, like two bucks a month or something. I'm actually looking into getting a landline. As of right now, I actually do have a landline. Uh, so, uh, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it just happened like yesterday, but, um, I actually do have a modem as well and a interface adapter. Um, so I'm going to try to connect through a landline and, uh, I got a, a landline, like a phone recently, um, uh, yesterday. And it was like, I think it was like 20 bucks a month. I might not keep it forever, but I definitely want to keep it long enough to connect for a while, have fun with it and geek out with my Atari computers and my modems and all that. So, Definitely cool. And I'm definitely surrounded by some cool uh, help, too. These guys are so knowledgeable. I'm just blown away by all the information that Rick and Adam know about Atari hardware and hardware in general. Uh, Adam also uh, loves the Bally Astrocade and focuses on that on his channel, Bally Alley. So check him out. And uh, just some fun times here. So I wanted to also show you really quickly. Um, whenever Rick was over, he actually... Uh, was taking Adam's uh, Atari disk drive here, as you can see. Uh, Rick has it flipped over. He's actually just just lubricating it a little bit and kind of doing maintenance on Adam's um, Atari uh, 
uh, floppy drive here. These things are massive. It's it's like a little car. Look at that. <laughs> but uh, Rick is so knowledgeable. Um, he's he's upgraded our memory and and our computers and um, loaded different variations of basic um, as well. So um, pretty cool. Now I'm not as technical as these guys are, um, of course. So I'm not going to even try to talk about some of the inner workings of these things. But um, on my Atari ST floppy, for instance, uh, Rick helped me with that one. He had to put a new belt on it. And I, I've actually yet to order the ones from Amazon. So he has like a rubber band on it or something at this point or a different belt that he found. Uh, but um, he's just so uh, uh, ingenious with this stuff. So I'm definitely lucky to have him. Now you do not have to connect through a modem like this. Um, or I'm sorry, this is a hard drive, but you don't have to connect through a modem. Uh, you can actually connect to an Atari BBS through, uh, you know, your computer or iPad um, or your iPhone. Even uh, there are many different ways to connect. Now, now, now the way this, that we're connecting here, obviously, um, in these videos I'm showing you, aside from this one, uh, is through uh, a Atari computer and a modem and uh, and again, Adam has uh, a VoIP line, voice over IP. Um, so um, uh, he had that added to his his modem, uh, I guess, his equipment. So uh, pretty cool. Um, I actually um, have a landline, as I said. I'm going to connect that way. Um, so pretty neat. Rick is just so handy. Um, you know, I won't even try to tell you what he's doing here. <laughs> I think, as I said, I think he's just lubricating the hard drive. And I know this has nothing to do with bod day, but I just wanted to show you how helpful Rick is. Um, he'll just come over and start breaking down stuff and cleaning it up and fixing it and, uh, polishing it and, you know, doing maintenance on things. And, uh, I'm not going to show his face cause he doesn't want to be on camera, but here he is with, uh, Adam talking about what he's doing here. Um, and where he, he got some of his different, uh, items here. Uh, I have the volume turned down just to, to protect, kind of what we're talking about because we were discussing other stuff as well. So, um, but just very, really neat. It's so neat to have local Atari gaming and computer buddies. I'm just so grateful, especially in a desert like, like the one we live in. I mean, you know, geez, we're just really lucky. So, um, I'm going to head back to the XE term footage again. Um, here we are checking out the basement again and some other stuff. We're going to do this also on bod day on, March 12th, 2024, we're getting together over Adam's house. We're going to connect to the basement and to Southern Amos. And I want to check out the uh, Nightlight BBS as well. Apparently that was um, put back up. Um, and I think at one time it was actually an Atari BBS. Um, I'm not sure if that means Atari ran it or what, but need to do my research for sure. Um, I wanted to say make sure to check out Southern Amos on on the internet, I'll put the links below and the basement. Tons of information about bod day, about connecting, uh, troubleshooting, just lots of cool stuff. Um, lots of videos, as like other videos as well. Um, lots of history of the BBSs also to dig into. Um, there's just a you know breadth of knowledge out there. And um, I'm not the most harbor savvy, as I said, but I know with these guys help, uh, it's definitely going to be an easier ride for me. So, um, just really cool. So after this guys, I'm going to show you the interview, um, with two sysops, as I said, from the basement and from Southern Amos, uh, John and Rob are so cool to talk to. I'm so, so thankful they contacted me and are willing to be so open and giving and just sharing this knowledge. Um, and I'm also thankful to Kay Savitz on the Antic 8-Bit Atari podcast. He first talked about Muffin Term to me anyway. That's the first time I heard about it was from Kay Savitz on that podcast. And uh, he was talking about how easy it was just to use Muffin Term or one of the other programs to get online if you don't have a, a proper modem and a landline. And sometimes that's actually a lot faster to do it that way and cheaper. I mean, who doesn't have a PC or a mac line around or iphone or something right and again you, you can't connect through pc as well uh, i'll put all the information in this episode uh so here is the screen being drawn here for the basement it took us a little bit because we were doing this for the first time after a, 
forever probably. But uh, pretty cool. Got a little gun here. I think that uh, that is actually an old logo from the channel, uh, from the site. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they still have this stuff up. Um, just amazing. It's like a little slice of history, you know. Uh, back again when I was 18, I joined my first VBS, Argus, and I had such a great time just chatting in the chat rooms. There was there were little trivia games you could play with each other, like like text based games. Um, there were events where we would meet up at, um, I remember we used to always meet up at this barbecue place, uh, once a month and play pool and drink and hang out. And, uh, some of the people were even dating that were in the group and, uh, s some of them had become best friends. And this is over, you know, like 30 years ago, by the way. Um, but I'm just so thankful that I stumbled across BBS is what I did when I was 18. I had such a great time. This is back in the early days of the internet. This is whenever AOL basically had just come out and started sending out those pesky uh, floppies. This is before the disks even. And uh, you would connect. And I know when I connected back then, it was like, I think it was like, I don't know. It was it, There was like an hourly charge on AOL. Was it $5 an hour? I can't remember. But it took an hour just to get your text email, guys. I'm not kidding. And to download pictures back then on the internet, it would take forever. I remember the lines just drawing on the image just slowly, you know, and that was using a, a, a 1200 baud modem. Um, but yeah, so here is the setup. I think he's using the XM301 modem. I might not have that right, but um, pretty cool. So just checking in stuff here, <laughs> looking at the message boards, pretty cool. I love that too. So if you do connect to an Atari BBS guys, Specifically also for BOD Day 2024, which is March 12th this year, make sure to uh, leave a message on a message board and just to say hi. You don't have to type your life story, but just say where you're from and say hi and say happy BOD Day. It's a way for friends to get together, to meet new people, and it's just great. This is also why I'm a ham radio operator as well. I love talking to people far and wide making new friends all over the world. You could even talk to the, uh, the um, International Space Station uh, on a ham radio. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. And with stuff like this, just connecting to these VBSs, I mean, the world is our oyster, fellow Atarians. We can do whatever we want in 2024. It's so cool. And, uh, and again, it can also be free. So make sure to check out the connect, uh, the how to connect videos I'll be posting as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get ready. I'm going to do a quick intro to these interviews. Here we go. I'm so glad you're here, guys. Thank you. Uh, so before we get to the interview, um, it's about 45 minutes or so. Before we get to that, I want to share with you something that John wrote. Now, John is one of the guys I'm going to be talking to, John Polka. He posted this on southernamus.com. It says, uh, Bod Day. By John Polka. It says 3-12-24, Bod Day. Bod Days are like comments. They do not come around too often. December 24th, 1996. 12 24 96 marked the first BOD day with little fanfare as many saw the popularity of the computer bulletin board system, BBS, waning from the rise of the internet. Fast forward to the year 2022. The BBS has been in the middle of a renaissance since the 2010s. There are fewer BBSs than in the 1980s, but most of the BBSs that we now have are accessible from anywhere in the world through the internet. Dial-up modem access is still available on many of today's BBSs as well. It was also during this time that I, John Polka, sysop of the basement BBS, was thinking about the different dates that we have... Uh, sorry, that we have made into fun celebrations. This includes Pi Day, March 14th, or 3.14, Star Wars Day, May the 4th, Revenge of the 5th, and 6th Day, May 5th and 6th, etc. This led me to wonder if there is a fun date to celebrate modems and BBSs. Yes, February 16th is considered BBS Day as it marks the date when the first BBS went online, February 16, 1978. But 2-16-1978 or 2 does not otherwise suggest anything unique to BBSs. Excuse me, let me silence my computer real quick, guys. That was actually Adam text or emailing me. <laughs> so uh, here we go. He says here, Then I remembered something that Sysops did when they advertised their BBS. 
Rather than write a BBS of supported baud rates as 300, 1200, 2400, they would write 31224. The reason for this abbreviation is probably due to how BBSs were advertised back in the day. Most BBSs were advertised in text files. Depending on the host computer, a text file may have 40 or 80 characters per line. So, space was at premium, and dropping 6 characters from 300, 1224 made a big difference. By the 1990s, 300 baud was pretty much dead, so many BBSs would advertise a starting baud rate at 1200. The abbreviation 122496 also became common. Now, looking at 31224 and 122496, I realized that these baud rates are also calendar dates, hence baud day was born. How to celebrate baud day. Love it. It says, the best way to celebrate Bod Day is to call a BBS and wish everyone on that BBS a happy Bod Day. If the users on that BBS ask what you are talking about, feel free to point them to this web page. The two main ways to connect to a BBS is through the internet or through a dial-up modem. The internet method is probably the easiest as there are terminal programs that run on, mod on modern devices that will connect to a BBS over the internet. Since you are reading this web page, you already have internet access. You just need a terminal program. Two good free choices are Sync Term and Muffin Term. Sync Term runs on most modern computer systems. Muffin Term runs on Mac OS, iOS, and iPads. That is right. You can use Muffin Term to call BBSs from your iPhone. Check out this website's How to Connect page for more information on connecting to BBSs through the internet. Some BBSs also have a web interface, so you do not need a terminal program to access them. The Telnet BBS guide provides a list of approximately 1,000 BBSs that you can access through an internet terminal program, through a web interface, and or through a dial-up modem. Don't throw out that modem. Bod day is coming. 31224. To access a BBS through a dial-up modem, you will need a landline phone and a dial-up modem connected to a computer. The landline can be a traditional copper phone line or it can be a voice over internet protocol VOIP phone line. VOIP is a little more challenging to connect to a BBS than a traditional phone line since the modem is an analog device and VOIP is digital. However, a good error uh, correcting modem will work over VOIP. Besides using the Telnet BBS guide for finding BBS phone numbers, you can also use the 2600 network to connect to any internet BBS through a dial-up modem. You can also celebrate Bod Day by sharing your BBS stories new and old in our Bod Day forum. And to commemorate this glorious event, we have t-shirts with the following image available too. Click on the image below to purchase a t-shirt. Very cool. It says, honoring the sound of a generation. Skier burr. Bod day, 312.24. That's the sound a modem makes, by the way. And that was really bad. I know it was, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I'll try again later. It says, lastly, keep your eyes out on our Bod Day forum for opportunities to win t-shirts and other prizes. Thank you for your participation with Bod Day and happy BBSing. Acknowledge, uh, sorry, acknowledgements. John Poka thanks Sysop um, Amos of the Southern Amos BBS Projects for his valuable input and for hosting the Bod Day webpage. Also, thank you to the amazing users and Sysops of the Atari BBS community for their support. Really cool, guys. So what I'm going to do now is actually click on this How to Connect page because I want to share this with you as well. This is all important information, of course. Uh, let me just see here. So how to connect to Atari BBSs. There are actually several videos here it's pointing to on YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll just post this link down below on southernamus.com uh, slash how to connect, okay? That way you can watch these and um, it'll help you get on there. There's uh, Amos XE. There's all kinds of stuff. Atoski Connect. Uh, really cool. It says down here, connecting has become really simple regardless of platform. If you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or vintage hardware, you can tell that instead of dialogue into hundreds of hosted BBS sites. Native hardware, Altera Emulator, or Atari 800 Mac X, using a terminal program such as BobTerm, or using FujiNet, or even from your iPhone using MuffinTerm. Use the following dial command in the terminal program. ADTD, southernamus.ddns.net, 23. Use the following dial command in the terminal program. I'll put this here on the screen so you can see it. Um, at menu, select Atoski translation at 4800 baud rate. Sorry. Download the FujiNet test of versions of Bob Term here and visit here for the full Atari BBS list. Lots of technical stuff here. 
So I'll do guys, I'll just leave this to you on the screen. There's FujiNet information here, Altera, talking about Bob Term, all kinds of stuff. The easiest way that I connect guys is through Muffin Term on my um, my iPad. So go to the Apple Store on your iPad, download a program called Muffin Term, M-U-F-F-I-N-T-E-R-M, and you go in there, and basically you're, you're going to get a BBS Telnet on the web and look for a BBS. And I'll put the information down below. So you can select, like, type in the basement. You could type in uh, Southern Amos or whatever else it is. And you could find BBSs to connect to a muffin term for free. Um, and you, you want to go in there and select a task key, I think, on some of these uh, just so it looks better on the screen. That was my case anyway. So, But play around with it and see what you like. But you could connect in a matter of, like, five minutes or less. So pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get right to this interview, guys. So me and my good friend Bally Alley um, interviewed the SysOps from the basement and from Southern Amos. And uh, this is uh, John and Rob. So let's go ahead and dig right in, guys. Can't wait to get started. Here you go. Hey guys, welcome to Atari Newsline. I have some really cool guests today. My good friend Bally Alley, of course, uh, Adam is here. Um, and I also have uh, two new guests, which is awesome. I have Rob, um, who also goes by Amos down here. How you doing? Doing well, thanks. Sure thing. And, and we have John here as well. Um, I love your background, John. It is, it's so... Uh, what's that dude's name in the 80s? Max Headroom. Max Headroom, Max Headroom yeah. <laughs> It was my tip of my tongue. <laughs> and uh, it's so good to see you guys. So um, here recently, me and Adam were talking about this. We're part of the um, Albuquerque Atari Computer Enthusiasts, which which rebooted recently after being out of commission for a while. And uh, we have a group of people that meet either together or separately, you know, like in groups of two or three here and there, do the best we can, but um, to geek out on Atari computers and stuff. But um, so as full disclosure, um, I, uh, I'm excited to talk about this cause I'm very passionate about it. I, I joined my first BBS in 1993 and it was Argus in Arlington, Texas. And, um, with my first computer, I bought myself out of a thrifty nickel, which was a Tandy 3000 with, with the 1200 baud modem or something. And it's been a while. And, uh, so I got on there and, uh, just started making friends on Argus mm -hmm. and um, I was told about it by a coworker of mine at Arby's <laughs> when I was 18 nice. <laughs> and we chose my, my handle based on the fact I loved coffee and it was ballistic coffee boy. And that's still the, that's still my handle to this day. So uh, this, this conversation has a special meaning to me because that's kind of where I got my start with like BBSs and, and like eventually getting back into Atari and computing. But um, it's so good to have you guys here. Um, yeah, so, it's good to see you guys. It's uh, I've yeah. spoken with John a little bit and uh, through the BBS, so it's cool. Yep. Yeah, we got a right. mutual friend, Rick, as well, yeah, who uh, has an awesome homemade three to bottom yeah. modem. Right. Yeah, he lives here in Albuquerque as well. Cool. He's such a great friend, but he does, he's camera shy um, and doesn't want to be on video. But <laughs> man, he has. I've like okay. I met Ad. I met Rick through Adam. I met Adam through Chris Plus Plus, who I met through Ferg. And his podcast, so <laughs> um, his Atari Twenty Six Hundred podcast. But um, Rick has been amazing. He'll just he'll fix whatever I give him to look at. Um, he's taken apart ST floppy drives and upgraded my twelve hundred XL, and just and he tries to tell me what he's doing, and I'm like, okay, like I have no idea. You know, <laughs> he's trying to educate me, but uh, he's, he's very smart. Um, but I'm so glad to have you guys here. Um, um, I heard about something uh called called bod day do you guys want to go into detail about what that is sure uh yeah. i guess i can start and maybe rob rob can also add as well but uh, back in about it all started about a couple years ago um so first of all i made it back up a little bit i i've known sure. amos since uh 2020 we we did meet uh through the bbs's and uh he and i have have one, one thing we have we have in common is that we're, of course we're very passionate about atari bbs's but we're also very passionate about preserving um you know the uh preserving the hobby and of a bbs team because it is kind of a it is a lost art uh back in the 2020 2010s uh it's, it's had a bit of a re renaissance so a lot of 
boards have returned. There's even some modern BBSs, but like in my case, I resurrected my BBS uh, from from the uh, 80s and 90s and back in 2017, and I was able to do that from from some old uh, backup floppy disks I had. So you know, when you call the board, you get to see even some of the co old content, old messages from from the 80s and 90s, which uh, you know I I think is pretty cool. Uh, but you know, we're, but you know, we're very passionate about the about the hobby and and more so trying to promote it and trying to get people attracted to it. So. Uh, you know, we're always trying to come up, come up with creative ways to do that sort of thing. And, but, you know, back a couple of years ago in 2022, I, I you remember we have this, we have all these different days, like we have May the 4th, you know, for Star Wars Day, May the 5th or May the 6th, you know, Revenge of the 6th or whatever. And then we also have Pi Day, which is March 14th, 314. And, and then, and then I re remembered, I, and I remembered how uh, SysOps back in, uh, back in the day would, um, would abbreviate the baud rates that they supported. And that was primarily because uh, BBSs were advertised through text files. And of course, when you're using text files, you know, you're limited to either 40 characters, if you have a really old 8-bit machine or like an Atari 8-bit, for example, or uh, 80 characters. Uh, but still, uh, you know, you're very, you have a limitation of characters. And so a lot of times they would abbreviate it as 3, 12, 24, you know, for the, for the baud rates, 300, 1200, and 2400 and so it dawned on me that's a date you know 3 12 24 uh it's march 12th 2024 uh if you're outside the u.s it's going to be december 3rd 2024 but since we're in we're in the u.s we're gonna we're, you know we have first dibs on it we're gonna we're gonna celebrate on, on march 12th uh 2024 but that was a couple of years ago i came up with the idea and uh and the time blew by really quickly and it was only like uh, oh, just... uh so john uh this is going to be the first one then the first bod day well, technically, uh, the first one we've actually observed, but the very first one was actually December 24th, uh, uh, 1996, which was 12, 24, oh. uh, 96. Mm. Uh, and, but, uh, but yeah, no, this will be the sort of the first one. I think we're going to sort of turn into a celebration. And so, uh, we've, we've, we've started to promote it on through social media and, and other avenues and, uh, it's really taken off and, and uh, we even have a website where you can learn more about it. And uh, we even have some merchandise available, some T-shirts and, and whatnot. And we're not making any money off the T-shirts. They're they're priced at cost. We're just honored if somebody wants to buy one and, and wear one. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Ra I'll let Rob speak a little bit too. No, I mean, there's so many dates that become relevant in BBS history. And of course, I mean, you know, we, we try to keep track of, you know, dates for when, you know, Amos as a BBS was first launched and, you know, Ward Christensen and, you know, Randy Seitz, right, launching, you know, their BBS going back to, you know, 1978 and, you know, keeping these things in preservation so that they become milestones. And of course, you know, as, as, as John had said, it's our mission to continue to preserve all of these aspects of Atari BBSing, but it's also getting greater adoption to it, right? So, you know, creating these events that get people to experiment with the gear that they have, or, you know, like yourself, Brian, right? Picking up muffin term or picking up icy term and trying out, a, you know, a BBS from modern hardware. You know, th this is really the mission of exploring, you know, and, and, and providing this as, right, community. And underneath it, there's a ton of things that, you know, we, we do in community projects, right? So hence, like for me, the Southern Amos projects, these things are all mapped together, right? They're done in, you know, preservation for all these programs. They're done, you know, in support of SoCal, v, you know, VCF. They're done in, you know, ways of being able to get new SISOPs coming online, SISOPs coming online and running boards and so on. And milestones seem to be the best trigger for everyone to get together and, you know, take that first leap and jump back into it. And it's amazing what you hear, right? So we expect Baud Day to actually be a pretty significant day as far as traffic to the to the BBSs. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why, you know, people that have been longing to do it and made up, you know, the excuses of I'm too busy or, you know, too much, you know, too much of a hassle to put it together. We've made it so that you could do it from an iPhone, you know, down to, you know, a, a Mac. Yeah, there you go. Right. An iPad uh, and your original hardware. So it can't be easier to, you know, to join in on it. Thank you.
Bob, if uh, someone hasn't logged in before, and I mean, their first experience with BBS is going to be uh, one of the two BBSs that you guys run, uh, what would you suggest for the first time they use, like Muffin Term? Maybe we should explain what Muffin Term is real quick. I, I mean, I've used it, but uh, uh, watchers might not have. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, let's start there with Muffin Term, um, Molly, uh, who, you know, basically created this off of her C64 days, you know, decided that it'd be great. There you go. To have a modern architecture basically built in Swift, you know, bringing through the Apple right app store, the ability to be able to take down an app and put it onto an iOS device, iPad, iPhone, or an OS X device. Uh, so, her her first iteration of it was basically, you know, ANSI, ASCII, you know, the basics. And then we pestered her to include Atari, Atasky, and more than happy to jump in and did a brilliant job of creating the emulation. So that's really the first step that's really easy. But if you wanted to look at other ways to be able to log on to BBSs, including the lists, software that's available and all that, we created on southernamus.com a full right set of videos instructions files and details detailed explanations of how you can get on you know the various boards specifically the atari boards whether they be 8-bit or, or 16-bit uh and you know it's as easy as you know finding your way to whatever's comfortable for you in your hardware selection your architecture you know even in some cases you can do it directly from web pages for ascii connect through F Telnet and things like that. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, I first kind of kind of heard about this uh, when um, Antic, the Atari 8-Bit podcast, was talking about Muffin Term. And I often listened to Antic at the gym. I was, I was on the treadmill going, Muffin Term? I can use this on my iPad? And I had no idea because I always thought you had to have a modem, had to have, you know, the connections, a landline, whatever. And I was like, oh, that's going to get expensive. So I was on the treadmill going, well, I've got an iPad. Well, oh my gosh, it's free. So I downloaded Muffin Term based on, on my case Abbott said, and um, it works great. And you go on there and you, um, I would go to the websites to, to enter all the information. Like you have to enter the telnet and all this. And that's on um, the Southern Amos website, as well as the uh, basement website. And you can just type it in and it works great. You can go on there, make an account, um, look at the message boards, talk to people about Atari or APIC computing or whatever you want. Um, I, I saw on, uh, is it on Southern Amos where you earn flair? Is that or the basement? That's basement. Yeah. It's actually basement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a lot of office uh, space uh, references I saw on, that. on the basement. So if, if, if you're a fan of office space, check out the basement. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of fun. fun no, things. I, was, I actually wanted to ask you about you can, that. You can earn flair. And <laughs> yeah, I earned flair already. And I just made an account uh, today. So <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so was that, how many, um, like how often have you changed the environment for the basement like now you have the office space was that something you didn't i guess since 2017 so uh, yeah it's funny you mentioned that because actually uh yeah it used to be uh a, a different a different theme a mo they're mostly they're the theme i were, were like inside jokes from the 80s and 90s which maybe you know were really funny when we we're back and we we're in high school and very immature and so forth but maybe didn't necessarily don't necessarily uh translate um, as funny today. So I, I, I wanted to do something that's a little more uh, up to date and I love the movie office space. And, uh, it just, you know, it, I mean, if I, if I could start from scratch, I would do an office, I would just do an office space BBS, but you know, I, I, I still want to preserve some of the, uh, the, the old, um, basement, um, content. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't take it, take it all the way to that, to that point, but, uh, an, enough where, uh, it does talk about, you know, moving your, your, moving your desk to the basement. So there, there is, there is a, there is a reference, uh, a basement reference in, 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 in that regard. Um, also if I, if I can add one more thing about, about ways to get on BBS is that, that a Amos, uh, 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 didn't mention, and that is you can still use dial up modems on, on these, these BBS. Yeah. Now the basement does have its own dial-up uh, phone number, uh, but also uh, nice. there is a there's a website called 2600.net, and uh, that that if you go to that particular website, uh, you you can you can uh, 
you, you can you can get some uh, phone numbers uh, that you can dial to, and then there's also some logins to all the all the BBSs that are listed on the Telnet BBS guide, which is another website, uh, another good resource that has uh, almost a, you know, almost a thousand BBSs there, close to a thousand BBSs listed, and uh, I think just about all of them uh, have uh, access through through these dial. These are current dial current BBSs now. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, so wow. even if a BBS does not have a direct uh, dialed-up phone number, if you want to have that old school experience, especially you know, which is a great, great way, great way to uh, celebrate Baud Day, you you uh, get the modem out and you call one of these uh, access numbers, and then you can put in uh, their the website also shows you what 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 you put in for the login and password, and you can then uh, connect to those BBSs. Even though many most of them now are on are connected to the internet, but uh, this particular service uh, is a gateway between a dial up uh, phone number and, and the internet. Yeah, Adam, if you take a look at the website for twenty six hundred dot network. Mm -hmm. you'll see that they've created through a, a, a number of routers and dug in and created the ability to be able to take a dial-up modem signal and convert that into the forward path going into the IP addresses for the for the BBSs. Uh -huh. So you, you don't have to necessarily have a modem online. I mean, basement's brilliant, right? I mean, right. You, can, you can go and tell that, right, or your, you know, your IP address. Or you can dial up, and there's a bunch of, of of BBSs that still preserve that. But the team that did this particular work in creating access numbers, dial up, and then converting it over and making dial up available to every one of the BBSs that are in the Telnet guide, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. And again, community work, nothing that's charged here. So, I was going to ask you, Rob, uh, did you start? Southern Amos, or did you take it over, or what's the history with you in the BBS? Yeah, so I mean, my first board was built on Fast Amos when, and, and this is going back, you know, I mean, 1980, right, and change. I think I, you know, call it, I was somewhere around 10 or 11, right? You so had that an was Atari my first BBS in 1980? Yeah, I mean, 1980s, 1980s. It started, oh. I think the board came out in like 1984 ish or okay. so, right? So the so the first program that I used was called Fast Amos, which was basically just a derivative of CBBS. Um, you know, more work that was done by you know the the group out of Michigan that you know basically they made this available in the public domain. I got a copy of it and you know ran it with a 1030 modem, built a ring detector from parts from Radio Shack. And the program between a group of us had started to evolve. And we had like all these, you know, interesting names for the boards. And one of them was called South of the Border. And that was the board in Long Island, New York, that we did the majority of the work on as experimental to, you know, bring out the total Amos program to expand it. Mm -hmm. So we referred to it as Southern Amos. And then when I moved to Southern California, you know, in, you know, some 30 years ago, almost um, all of these things that I had packed up and everything, you know, brought it all out. And I started just building around Southern Amos as being the header for the projects. And then Southern Amos being the core BBS underneath that is Amos XE, which is a total rebuild from the Atari enthusiast under Asia BBS, which goes back to about 1986. Um, from that team, uh, Geis and so on. And then, um, you know, Nightlight BBS, which was the initial corporate 8-bit BBS for Atari, restored that one as well on top of like Forum XE, Forum wait, wait, XE back, Pro back and so how, on. How were you able to restore Atari's formal BBS? Well, I mean, it was available in the public domain. So Nightlight was first went online in oh, 1986. I see. So you don't mean the files that like, like you don't mean a No, no, not the original one, the code, oh, right. The code that was used for the BBS. So, I gotcha. you know, out in the wild, you'll find pieces of just about everything. So Nightlight, for an example, I was able to find from, you know, some prior SysOps, SysOps, I was able to find their, you know, their source files, you know, basic utilities for it. And then went through the process of making it so that, you know, you're restoring it back to its near original components, right? It's near original works. 
And then from there, bringing it back online, getting, you know, all of the, the call weight routines working, getting everything synced up and, and progressing as far as new files, creating new Atasky screens, fixing out message bases, databases, right? And, you know, all the XIO commands that, you know, run the board and keep it stable in both a new environment as well as in the legacy environment. So everything that we build, like, for example, the Southern Amos board that you were on today, Brian, that one actually runs in the AWS cloud. And then Amos XE is running on real hardware on an 800 XL, or sometimes I move it around to a 130 XE, but I could change the environments. Um, I have some, you know, Nightlight in some cases is running on a 1200 XL, but, you know, overall, that these things are made to be able to work in emulator environments. So like, you know, Avery Lee's, you know, Altera, you know, platform or 800 Max, right, for, for Mac hardware. Um, so that this way you can determine, hey, I want to run it in an emulated environment. I want to run it on VM. I want to run it, you know, on real hardware. Or, you know, even we've got some sysops that are running on Linux machines and emulating through Wine and, and so forth you know, to bring the boards online. So a lot of creativity in the modern to retro stand-up. That, that's awesome. I was going to, I was going to ask you too, John, how did you get involved with the basement? Have you been involved since the beginning or did you come later? Or? Oh, yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. So I, I started the basement back in uh, November, 1986. And wow. uh, it's, it's quite funny because I started off also off on Amos and um, I, uh, I had a paper out at the time. And so I saved my money up and bought a, a Supra 300 AT 
300 baud modem, which was a rebranded uh, MPP 1000E uh, modem, and 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 then was that and then the one when that I, plugged into the joystick ports? Yeah, that's one that goes with it through the joystick port. Okay. And what's funny is that I didn't have my own phone line. I just I just you know without any permission. Um, I, I just I stuck it on our on our uh, family uh, line. Uh, I was thinking I could sneak it on there, like during the during the school day, you know, school when I was at school, and then and then come when I come home, I'd take it down, and then I I I'd put it back up, you know, in the evening and and stuff. And that that lasted a little bit, but then my mom quickly figured out what was going on. Uh, but you know, luckily for me, she she was really curious what I was doing, and she checked out the board, and she actually got hooked. She liked it, wow. and so then so then she allowed me to to keep doing what I was doing, and then eventually in uh, in the summer of uh, eighty seven, I, I end up getting my own phone line for it. Uh, but and and then the other interesting thing about about this early history was that it was also around that same time that uh, I was wanting to upgrade. Um, the uh, the board to a to a to a hard drive. I was running it off uh, uh, like three ten fifties before that, and, and back then I was I, back then I also had upgraded to the original BBS Ex Express. This is right now I'm running BBS Express Pro, but prior to that I was running the original BBS Express by uh, Keith Ledbetter, and I had met another uh, sysop um, uh, who, who was running uh, part time BBS, which is another BBS that uh, that I'm I actually resurrected back in 2017. And uh, he was helping me out with with the heart with with getting um, a hard drive together, and he just seemed like a really nice guy. So my my mom was you know she was divorced at the time, and uh, you know um, a, a son who was a little, little concerned about some of the guys she was dating at the time. I I just said you know you should go talk talk to Ken. You know that was his name. Talk to Ken. He's a nice guy. You know you might like him because you know she was all you know using the board and stuff. So she started the first time she actually started chatting, you know, they, they got together and they met up and, and, and now he, in fa fast forward uh, to the end of the story, he's now my uh, stepdad. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I actually, I actually set, set, set them two up and the neat That's thing amazing. is that, yeah, the, 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 the neat thing is that, um, Back in 2017, I was also able to resurrect uh, his old board. He, he he no longer was interested in running it, but uh, he allowed me to uh, to put it up. So there's also a BBS called Part Time BBS. Uh, it, it's also running BBS Express Pro, and uh, and that's my stepdad's um, original board. And a lot of the, like I said, a lot of the original content from you know from the 80s and 90s is still there. Uh, one of the interesting things about resurrecting these boards was back in um, 2017. Uh, my my uh, family had shipped me some old software and or old floppies and old hardware and and originally I just wanted to just boot it up once and just see what was there. I was curious and I soon discovered that a lot of the floppies weren't weren't bootable. And then another friend of mine, uh, uh, his name's Paul Simonza. I'll give him a shout out. He'll probably watch this. Uh, he uh, he taught me how to uh, how how to uh, resurrect uh, these floppies when they were not readable, and that's through you know literally washing them with a Q-tip and 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 alcohol and so forth. So I went through that process, and I was able to recover enough of those floppies that I was able to bring the board back up with with orig original content, and I did the same thing with with part time as well. And and then and then as soon as I brought it up, then I was hooked. Then I got the sys. Then I was bitten by the sysop bug again because I ran the originally I ran the uh, the, the base through 1998 uh i was i was still living in ohio at the time and i was and then i moved out here in september here which is uh portland oregon in in uh, september uh, 1998 and and i kind of lost interest you know everyone was like everyone was into, into the internet back then i kind of lost interest but then in 2017 yeah i got bit by the sysop bug again and i i needed to get that thing back up and and running and and it's been running ever since and and i i absolutely love it i, I still have the sysop bug today so um, yeah, I'm sure, sure I speak with, I'm sure I speak with Rob, you know, when you're a sys no. it's, it's just in your blood, you know, you, you, you know, it just, it, and it might go dormant for a while, but like when you get, when, but it'll come back and, and it did for both of us. That's so awesome. I was gonna, uh, it's just incredible. Um, I was astounded when I, you know, I logged on to Muffin Term today and was just able to like go and visit these BBSs and it just appears like it's just normal and i was like wow well brian i have incredible. to say that you are lucky because i've been logging into uh john's bbs at 300 baud and i have yeah. used but uh right. it's it takes about three or four minutes to get to the main menu after all the flair and talking about the office and uh office space so uh, i've got to learn the shortcuts i guess or just use muffin term but i have a good time uh using voice over ip to uh 
to use this modem. And I've also uh, logged in using a Timex Sinclair 2068 just for the fun of it. And here's a picture <laughs> of the basement screen, I guess. I that's want to show awesome. people. And I'll show it closer on the screen, but um, I wish I was freaking astounded that um, th that this stuff exists and you could still do it. And it's it's amazing. And there's you know there's nothing like being on you know in our case an Atari APIC computer dialing yeah, in. I've, I've seen Atari Adam ASCII. do. It. Yeah, I've, I've seen Adam do it, and Rick. He has a setup in his house too, and it's great. And I actually found this modem at a thrift store for five dollars in the box, and wow. it's great. And then I also got the, the I got the interface adapter from eBay for my Atari Apic Grade Fifty. Grade Fifty, yeah. Grade 50 so yeah. I'm getting parts together, and then I actually got a landline today, just a temporary one to, to test it out. So now I just need the software, I guess, right? Um, so I'm I'm slowly getting my pieces together to connect in real time, just like Adam and Rick do. So hopefully I can get that up and running soon. For Bod I did want to ask the two of you, since you guys have a BBS, back in the early 90s, uh, I was using Bob Term. Uh, if you guys were recommending a, a new terminal program for Atari users, what would you recommend? Yeah, that's what most people use, actually, because of the way that you know we've structured the relationship with uh, the team at FujiNet. Uh, you know, Tom Cherry Holmes basically hosts a version of Bob Term that has all of the direct dials for the boards. Uh, directly in the dial directory, just like you had phone numbers before back in the day. Uh, we worked on a little bit of code that allows longer macros to be sent that have the IP addresses, so it makes it really seamless. You go onto a trusted network file server, you select Bob Term, you know, you boot it up, you go to the directory, and you're you're online. All of the 850 Express programs, um, and there's a few versions of it. There's a there's a version that we actually surfaced from. Uh, one of our fellow SISOPs uh, that runs the uh, the boot factory. So um, BF2K Plus got us, because he's got a close relationship with Keith over the years. It's actually his board was one of the first that launched, right, under BBS Express Pro. Yeah, he's actually, he's actually yeah. running Keith Ledbetter's old BBS. So right. you know, another, another great historical uh, uh, fact there. And you can call his board and see old messages from Keith Ledbetter's old BBS as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. And, and, but he also, because he had access, there was a whole lot of competition going on between Keith and Bob at the time between who was going to invent the best, you know, term program. So there's a version of uh, 850 Express that is 9600 baud uh, that's available for download on the Southern Amos, you know, uh, dot com right on the website. So you can use that. There's programs that go back to, you know, Matt Singer for Forum that he built a modem and that were evolved and, you know, brought up over time. So there's a collection also for download on pre-built ATRs, which is the standard format, right? We, you know, that's, we call it our digital format of a floppy disk for Atari that, um, you know, basically have, you know, 10 different terminal programs on them and they all work the same. It's still the same Hayes commands, right? A D T, you know, to, to dial tone, and I just screwed that up. But you guys know what I mean. It's no, exactly it's what you're the same about, thing sure. we did when we were, you know, twelve. Except you're dialing a little bit longer of a number in the form of an IP address and a port. So.
Yeah. That's Keith, awesome. And Keith Ledbetter, you know, uh, and his and his par partner Chris King, uh, when they were uh, when they were running uh, Orion Microsystems, uh, they also released uh, ex the Express Cart, which is a cartridge uh, that has the Express program on. That's also re really good too. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a little hard to find now, but um, you know, uh, it, if you're interested, we could probably. Uh, Help someone help someone out who's looking for it, uh, but uh, you have to get a hold of us through through the BBSs, uh, and we'll we'll direct you. Um, to, we'll we'll yeah. direct you to somebody who could probably help out. If you, well, if we you actually mind, found I have out a couple questions easy. for the both of you. Um, I know we're going to be wrapping up here in like about yeah. ten minutes or so. I think is that right, Brian? Mm -hmm. Okay, eight, eight minutes. <laughs> I wanted to ask uh, just some questions going back in the day. I guess uh, if you guys uh, can remember, do you have any like particularly interesting stories about people who logged on or? Like, uh, did you guys have any famous people be like drop in and say hello or anything like that? Well, I it's funny you mentioned it because I think it was around it was either twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. Um, it was shortly after I uh, resurrected the BBS. Uh, Tom Hunt uh, actually uh, logged into my board. Uh, that, may, that name may ring a bell. Uh, he he did he did quite a bit of of software uh, for the eight bit uh, back in the day and 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 also did also ran a and he wrote a, for uh, analog computing right. Um, possibly he, he, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember, um, gosh, I don't remember the name of his board. I mean, it, it escapes me right now, but, but he also ran BBS express is, is pro as well. So that, that was, that was pretty exciting. Also many years ago, I, I got a phone call from uh, Matt Pritchard, uh, who, uh, who was also one of the early, uh, pioneers of the Amos program. Uh, I don't remember that, that I don't remember exactly what led up to that very well, but I think I probably call called his his BBS in Michigan probably left him some feedback, and he he actually called me on the phone. He was actually getting ready to to launch the uh, his commercial product uh, called Comet, which was a commercial version of Amos. So that was someone else that also I I, I talked to over the years, and possibly someone other people. I just I can't think of right now, but uh, I'll let Rob Rob talk as well. No, I mean when I was that young, I mean the people that I thought that were you know really impressive with dialing the BBS were these incredible setups that you know, ran these fantastic boards like, you know, Iron Curtain and the Bandits Hideout, you know, things like that. Um, you know, people from time to time, you know, you, you know, pop in and leave a message, but their name was, you know, masked, right? Or they used a different handle so that you, you know, you didn't know, you know, who exactly it was, but, I had a, you know, pretty good following from people that would come in from the Amos community, especially out of Michigan, that would come in and basically go, I, I can't believe that this is what this program is now, um, which was pretty flattering. I mean, it's, you know, when you look at these things compared side by side from 1984, right, to what it looked like in, you know, early 1990, and then what it looks like today, a lot of people are blown away. And, and today on social media, we're fortunate, we get a lot of feedback from people that were involved in programs you know, going back to the, you know, the, to the eighties that are, you know, very flattering, you know, it's really nice. They're big Atari heroes of ours. So we try to stay in touch and bring them together, especially at, you know, the, the VCF events. I, I will, I will, I will add one more thing. Um, I had a, probably the, the person that called from the furthest away, uh, I had a user that was calling for a little while there from, from per Peru. And this was back in the eighties. Wow. And, and it was kind of cool because we, I, I actually, um, I actually set we even set up a, a special message board that uh for, for talk you know you know like if people want to speak spanish they could uh, there or whatever but you know for for basically talking to uh, to to this person from from peru so uh that was uh that was that was probably pretty amazing amazing you know this was like i said back in the 80s so it certainly I have wasn't a funny feeling that uh he was using someone's credit card to make those phone calls because uh, who <laughs> knows i i didn't ask MCI you know? codes <laughs> yeah i didn't ask i didn't ask That's yeah exactly. then. I remember in the early '90s, I called uh, from New Mexico. I called a BBS from, uh, or that was in Florida, an Atari BBS, and I was on for a while talking to the Sysop. And I remember I got the phone bill, and I was like, I don't think I'll be doing that again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, different time back then. Yeah, yeah. I was. I wanted to just ask you guys as we're wrapping up. Um, can you uh, uh, mention again when Bod Day is, and is there anything else you're doing for Bod Day? Are there certain topics or things you're doing? on your BBSs for Baud Day, or is it just a uh, cool time to connect? Okay, so again, Baud Day is March 12th, uh, 2024. Uh, of course, if you're outside the USA and you wanna um, celebrate it uh, 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 using your date format, whichever date format that is, which is 312-24, uh, you might well wanna 
celebrate on December 3rd, uh, 2024. But here in the U.S., we're going to celebrate on March 12th, uh, 2024. And uh, it, we've already heard from from a few people that are planning on uh, you know breaking out the uh, the old school modem and uh, turning into kind of a little bit of a party to call, calling BBSs and so forth. I've heard of some meetups uh, with my board. Um, I'm going to have some T-shirt giveaways. Uh, so again, you know we we have these ball oh. day T-shirts. So uh, you can check those out and. Uh, for for callers to the board, what we will uh, be giving some of those away as well. Uh, call, callers to the board on Baud Day three twelve twenty four. If I get a T shirt from y'all, I'll wear it on my channel to publicize you. So <laughs> feel free to you say. Got it. <laughs> and and what about you, Rob? Uh, same with you, or yeah, I'm working on some new Atasky art. I, I mean, I, you logged onto the board today, so you could see. You know, I I take a lot of pride in putting together. You know those visuals that are on the board so i got a few things that are coming together the theme of southern amos a lot of it is still built around the old school modem so you could see the animations that run the you know the little lights on you know modems and you know the entry screens that you know that come in so i'm working on a bunch of that um i'm also trying to just confirm and i'll have this notated on the board that you know for new users we'll do a you know, we'll just pull everybody in for their first time logging onto the board We'll do a random drawing and we'll give away a FujiNet Pro, which is comes from our guys in uh, Poland from Lothrac. Nice. Um, and that's always, you know, a good way for people to, you know, take the opportunity to be able to get introduced to FujiNet, which is a great innovation for, you know, the A8 side of, uh, of computing for Atari, mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, get them to come on into the boards, right? Check out what they've been missing. Get off that social media stuff and get back to talking to people, right? That are that are like minded, right? Same community, solving problems, doing things interesting, right? Stop talking about cats. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, I'm so stoked about this. I'm just now kind of getting back into it, and it's it's exciting to me. And so I can't wait to get my real hook up on my 1200XL or my 800XL back here. Well, and get Brian, I've got a question for you, actually. So since this day is coming up, uh, we need to get together over here and log in. Yes, we're talking about that, going, to, going to Adams and, have, and logging in and us taking turns logging in and maybe having a drink or two and chatting and just kind of a get together. I think it'd be awesome. And I'm going to try to get some video of that for my channel. So hmm, we'll talk about that, too. But I'm, I'm excited about this. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Yeah, thank you, um, Rob and, and John. I appreciate it so much. Um yeah. and, Everyone check out uh, Bod Day. I'll put information in this episode and talk about it more after. And Bally Alley, of course, check out his page. Uh, but I appreciate y'all so much. And this is amazing work you're doing. We appreciate it so much. You're very welcome. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Adam. Take Thank care. You. Keep yeah. up the great work. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Awesome, guys. It's about to die, but I wanted to... Uh, do you guys want to record more or is that good? I think you got it I think before I think we bore the it. hell out of the world. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it, but you're welcome back at any time. Okay. Yeah, Brian, uh, Brian and uh, Adam, um, I'll send an email, but send me your address and your t-shirt size. I'll get you guys a, a t-shirt. Awesome. I'll okay. wear it. That was great. Right, thank you. I'll wear it on bod day.
Wow, guys. Rob and John, thank you so much for your contributions uh, to the BBS scene, um, especially um, hosting Atari BBSs. I mean, how cool. Um, these guys are just very awesome. And thank you so much for coming on at such short notice. Um, John actually reached out to me and said he'd seen me and Bally Alley talking about Antic Magazines, and that's how he heard about my channel. So he contacted me and, I, and told me about Bod Day, and I was like, go ahead and come on and talk about it. I would love to spread the news. So uh, an easy way to get on, you guys, again, is through Muffin Term using your iPhone or iPad. I'll put the information down below. It's an app you can get in the App Store, and it's free, absolutely free, to do all this. Uh, or if you have an Atari 8-bit computer or another computer as well, you can connect through a modem. Now, I actually have the interface adapter. I hook up to my 800XL or whatever. I'm at 850. Now, I haven't done this yet. I'm getting all the pieces ready. I just got a landline the um, yesterday so as of this recording. I also found this modem at a thrift store for like five bucks. This US Robotics 56K external modem, and it does work. So Adam's going to help me connect this one day. At least I hope he does. Um, and I'm also researching it myself online to see how to do it. So whatever happens, I'm going to get this running with my landline and be able to connect on an Atari BBS on my 1200XL or my my uh, 130XE. also have my 400 Mini, actually. Not, not my 400 Mini, but sorry. My 400 computer down here in the chair, if you can see that. I'm surrounded by Atari computers. So I've got my Atari um, XEGS over here. Um... 600 XO. I mean, stuff's everywhere. So I'm excited to get on, guys. Let me know down below what you think about Bod Day. I'm so freaked out about it. I love this idea. Thank you so much, John and Rob, for what you're doing. Everyone connect on Bod Day if you can. Now, um, the Albu the uh, my local Atari group, the Albuquerque Atari Computer Enthusiasts, are meeting up on March 13th um, to do this. And uh, I'm sorry, on March, uh, March 12th. We're meeting up on March 12th to do this, which is when Bod Day is. So, um, But I have to work that day. I'm going to get off and go to Adam's house, and we're going to hang out. We're going to connect to uh, some BBSs, probably um, uh, the basement and Southern Amos and maybe some others. Also, thank you, John, um, also and Rob, for the, for, um, the T-shirts. You're actually going to send me an Adam T-shirts to wear, I think. Uh, so I'm, or just one of them is, I'm not sure, but I'm excited about that. Thank you so much. And we definitely will do that to publicize your BBS. It's a great one. Everyone go and check it out. It's awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Be a good person, get your Java and go connect to a BBS today. We'll see you guys later. Oh, an Atari BBS. <laughs> Bye. You are watching Ballistic Hot Hot World. You are, you are watching, watching. Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.